welcome back part two and uh, still looking at we're cutting up this hull and getting it correctly shaped so as you'll know from the last part I cut this around on both sides and now I've actually glued it all back in uh, where I've done this for those that want to have a go just a couple of tacks of um, a couple of bits of super glue just to hold it in place just to lock it and then I've put a lot of a, a, a really wet joint of um, uh, Tamiya extra thin in there so you get the weld action I wouldn't advise using super glue on all of this to hold it all together because it can be quite brittle um, although there are some that are better um, Mr. Mower has told me about one I should try and I must get some is the rocket odorless CA I, I must try that so um and then basically you can see I've put some plastic strip in here just to sort of space it out because it was a bit um it was a bit too far in so I took a bit too much off this side I cut it pretty much perfect except for that little area there so happy with that so now my cardboard templates which I've made so we've got the uh, there's station 78 that goes on nicely and then we've got station 60 there and that goes on there nicely so we can see that it's not actually a mile out and you can see here that's about two millimeters that step there and this is about 2.4 millimeters here so it's not actually a mile out but over the actual width it's sort of five and four millimeters but it's it's the shape that matters and it's these it's these tiny little changes I don't know if I can get it in the correct angle now um, but if you can see now in the correct angle we've got this kind of this 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 taper going on there rather than having that sort of big hip to it coming up here so um, basically now we'll blend all this in so what I'm going to do now for this part is put some sprue glue in the joints the reason I'm using sprue glue I've got some tape over here to cover the detail from these scuttles rather than mess all that up but I'm putting the sprue glue in there basically because um, what it will do it will get into the joint because remember that is like a if you imagine a solid, solid block of plastic I've scribed through it and then I've sort of bent it open sort of like that so now I want something to go in there to replace it now as I say if I use super glue it'll fill the gap beautifully but it will also be quite brittle so I'm going to just put sprue glue in there because it's because it's sort of solvent based it will go into the plastic I need to actually thin this down a bit it's a bit um it's a bit on the thick side but I can just brush this in here and it'll basically get into that joint and then it'll set so it'll have like a, a welding action on it. It'll get in there and um, fill it, weld it, and basically make it all solid again. Uh, if you notice, I'm staying away from the ends because I don't want to. Um, I don't want to glue this to that because obviously I need to move this in line with that. So I just want to make this section of the hull solid in this one area. And then that'll be that done. I think I'm going to have to redo all this plating sort of from here forward. So I'm not too worried about damaging the plating. This model's covered in static. You can see the, the glue getting pulled off the, the brush. Yeah, this is way too thick. I need to um, thin it down. If it strings like this, it means it's too thick. So um, I'll thin this down and then I'll get that glue in there and then I'll be back. Right, so there we go. That's all done now. We've got the sprue glue in there and this is about 12 hours later. So as you can see, it's kind of all sunken in nicely so next thing we've got to do now is get rid of these steps we've got a step here and we've got a step here as you know so get rid of this one here now what we could do is just basically do the same thing again is cut along and cut along and then go in but we need to look at the easiest way of doing this with the least amount of cuts so obviously along here we want this to blend in with the rest of the hull okay I know I'm gonna say fuselage I know I am so we want this to blend in with the rest of the hull and then here we want to get rid of these steps so my plan is initially my plan was initially is to cut here cut here score 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 and then fold those in remove some material from these sides and then fold this in but of course it's very difficult to get to these sides with it attached here so I ended up cutting this piece out so we cut this triangular piece out scored these bent them in and then put this back in and then plaster it in sprue glue again to get into all those joints and basically harden everything up now this was done as i, I think i said 10 or, like 10 or 12 hours ago so it's um it's all you know quite hard and it's it's solid now so you can see that side is done 
and now we've basically got our um, and we'll set it again our hull is now blended and I can tell you from what I can see um, it's very difficult to show on camera because obviously I can't get the perspective but basically already if we forget this this, this step here if I take that out of the shot we can see that the the hull it now looks a lot more consistent and also if we roll it over if we look now if you just look at it now comparing this side to this side even that tiny little bit you can see how now with these plates done as per the drawings I've got when you look at how that all blends in there with those plates compared to here you know it's literally it's a couple of it's, it's two and a half millimeters at the back about two millimeters at the front but look at the difference it's incredible um so yeah it's 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 some pretty major surgery and i'm glad i've done it the one thing i would recommend if you are doing this um possibly super glue in temporarily the uh the weld deck or something but make sure it's fixed i've managed to put a piece of sprue through those holes that are drilled um, I've got this rubber band going across here with one tourniquet keeping it in. Um, when you take this out, the shape of the side of the hole changes. So having that in there and clamped and everything is, I hope, it's keeping it square and even. Um, what I do from time to time is I, I, I lay it on the bench and then I put a spirit level at each end to check that I'm not sort of inducing any twist or anything. And if I am, then I can, you know, cut the joint again and... and pull it back hold it clamp it and then uh, glue it again but the, the biggest thing for this is to not actually add any stress and I'm going to show you that now all right so I'm going to basically score all this first because scoring it with a um, the paddle line cutter gives you a good um, a good starting place for the saw I'm using this Tamiya it's, it's actually an alpha P cutter basically because it's a, it's, it's a bit of a if you if you start to use pressure it's a bit of a butchery tool rather than a fine scriber although you can use it as a fine scriber if you're gentle but um what i'm doing now is just basically scribing a line down through these and scribing a line over these strakes is not easy okay and then i'm going to come along here now i don't know how successful this is going to be because the hole keeps wanting to slide away from me and if you prefer the camera angle that i'm using please don't tell me because i can assure you it is a pain um so to give you an idea, I am sat back in the chair with my left arm pretty much stretched out as far as it will go. Pretty much like driving a car and holding a steering wheel. And my head is about to bump into the camera. So that's how sort of uncomfortable this is for modelling. So uh, yeah, maybe when I get my new camera, I'll have a zoom feature. I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to give a better angle or something. We shall see. Now I want to make sure I scribe this away from the away from the scuttle, so I don't want to damage them. It's just a couple of just a couple of cuts along there. The um, the size of this thing becomes a bit of a pain when you're doing stuff like this because it's so unwieldy. Now scribing these is awkward because the the scribing tool wants to run off along the was to run off along the um, the length of the strakes. There we go. So get a nice deep cut in there. Crazy, didn't we? Buy a four hundred pound bloody model and we got to start cutting it about like this. <laughs> well, we haven't got to, but you have if you've got some kind of mental issue like I obviously have. Like I said, please don't tell me if you think I'm mental in the comments. I'll say I'm mental. And, uh, yeah, some of you have left some very good comments, actually, some very funny ones. Um, what I meant was when I said, when I you know, got to, tried to run, run away there, what I meant when I was saying about not saying I'm mental was um, it's the, uh, you know, well, what's the point of doing that? Why don't you just get on and build the thing? Oh, yeah, shut up. <laughs> so um, that's what I meant. I know you guys have made a lot of comments about uh, thinking I'm mental and I 100% agree. Oh, oops, and I did have a giggle. I've got to be careful of when you go off track like that. Okay, so there we go. So that's those cuts done. And then we can get the saw and then we can use the saw to follow in our 
cut lines, easier pushing than pulling. Just like so. Just keep going until we go through. If you notice I'm using the corner of the blade just to kind of scribe my way through. It's great how thick this hull is, but when you're doing stuff like this, it's a pain in the arse. all flat now and then we can get in there and just cut that out. I thought I was using the fine side of the saw then. Right. There we go. I think I've gone slightly off track there so it's got like a bit of a kink in the in the cut and then I could come in with this one this is um RB Productions one and that enables me to get more into the into the corner just like so okay and then we do the same up here come up to this end all right and then once again I'm gonna put some deep scores in here And then that will enable me to bend that easily. And what I don't want to do is start having to put lots of pressure on to make it bend. So I'm going to cut down there, cut along there, score along there, and then I'll show you when I've got that done. Right, so I've gone around now and cut that out. So that should now just get my hand up inside. I should be able to just pop that out. He says, there we go. So that's that piece cut out. <laughs> We've got a hole in our hull again. Um, a lot bigger than the hole the iceberg made. Now, as you can see here, what we've got is I can easily bend this down and hold it in place and put some super glue or whatever. But what I don't want to do is put any stress in the hull at all. I just want to be able to put the plastic there and it stay in place without any. If I start pushing, pushing in here and forcing this down and putting stress into this area here, that's when you start to get your shape problems. So. What I'm going to do is with my saw, is just come along here and just keep scoring this all the way along from end to end until I get a sort of all the way, almost all the way through, and then I should be able to bend that down, and it will kind of almost want to snap off, but. I'm not going to snap it off, I hope. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually bending now at that joint. It's not, you can see here, it's not, it, it's obviously bending. It's obviously putting stress in the side because I'm pushing it. But when I let it go, it stays there rather than springing back. I could also bend it out if I want to. I can bend it in, bend it in a bit further, like that. You know, it's almost ready to snap off there. So that's how you want it. So it sits there and there's no pressure up here at all. It's not pulling or anything. And then we'll do the same on this one here. You can see there's a plastic, as we get to the bottom of the hull, it gets thicker. So we need to do more and more cutting. Make sure I'm on camera here. making sure we get the ends as well because that's where the stresses might come from. The other thing I'm going to do is run a saw down there because I've got some 
sprue glue in there which when I shut it up it may well this is awkward the camera's in the way um, the sprue glue may well in induce stress so it will go in there but it will be pushing there we go so you see that that moves there freely now rather than pushing so <clears throat> I'm gonna cut some more here Again, making sure we get the ends Bit of bend that down. There we go. And you sort of, it, you'll feel it go soft if you if you're doing this. You'll you'll feel it go soft just before it breaks. That's the time you want to catch it. Just before it snaps. Nope, it's uh, still too much. Still too thick. If you're looking at this and thinking, "Oh my God, this is bushery." Uh, you're right <laughs> it is but it's butchery in a controlled manner okay as I say it would be easy to just hold that down put some super glue in there leave it but then you're forever having a twisting moment here and when you start sanding and stuff you might start to see things start moving around so it's best just to let it have its sit in its natural state Okay, so we're nice and flush there. We're nice and flush there. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be covering it with plating anyway. And there we go. And I'm going to use my Mr. Cement S here purely because I get more glue on the brush than I do with my extra thin. And yes, I know I can get the brush to go deeper in the extra thin. Obviously somebody's just walked past the house. How dare they? Jess is going to tell them off. There we go. Just want to get that nice and flush. And then that can just sit to dry for a few minutes. Right, so now that's dry. Uh, what we need to do now is just come along and fit this, um, fit this triangular piece in. Now obviously because I've bent these sides in as I've bent them in just close that in a bit as I've bent them in obviously the gap will have got smaller so I need to sand material away from here so as you can see if I try and put that in there I've done some sanding on it already it doesn't quite fit so I'm just gonna remove some material from the sides see if it fits in there now again we want this to fit in and just fit in nicely we don't want to be wedging it in there banging it in there with hammers and stuff we just want it to sit there and not put any pressure on anything around it and there we go I think that'll do us that's pretty flush I'm just gonna get my hand in behind it's like giving birth to a cat calf um, I think what I'll do is get some glue on there but basically that's nice and flush there I'm gonna if it's not perfect it doesn't matter because we're gonna be doing loads of sanding here anyway so I'm gonna get my Mr. Cement S in there and get this back edge sort of tacked in I need to get inside again and push that corner out as you can see this isn't the easiest operation in the world I mean what you could do is put some plastic card in behind it give it something to sit on but really I don't think you need to there we go so we'll put some glue down in there as you can see it's such a nice easy fit it just it's just falling in there and it's not it's not putting any pressure anywhere else and that's the secret to keeping it all square as I say I've done the Bismarck that involves cutting huge sections of the hull out 
than the Arizona, which I think you've seen. And that is absolutely completely cut to pieces. And um, managed to keep the hull square and true on both of them. I'd love to have a go at Missouri, but the kit is just so expensive. Because the, the stern on the Missouri, I don't know how to explain it, it's, it's, um, it's awful. But I really do enjoy doing stuff like this. So we're just going to get it in there flush. Now, it's gone a bit baggy, a bit loose, which would indicate that I had an angle on there and the glue has sort of softened the edge of the angle. So if I had two faces coming together like this, then the glue would sort of soften it so you'd end up with a fairly loose fit. So what I'm going to do is wedge some plastic card in there. OK, so what I've got here is um, scraps of 10,000 strip from where I did the... Uh, where I did the whole plating on the stern. So we just insert that in there, cut it off roughly to length and slide it in. Okay, and then see if we get another piece in there. Yes, we can. As you can see, I'm not pushing it hard because as I say, I don't want stresses building up in there. I don't want to be pushing anything. That off there. And I'll just drop in. So I'm just going to get my hand up inside again, which is easier said than done. And then push out, push in. Do it coming out a touch. And there we go. And then basically with our glue, just give it another layer. You can't have too much in there. Just layer it in, get it in there. Let it do its job. Just like so. And the reason I'm putting glue in those scored areas because I'm going to go in there now with the with the sprue goo and it kind of gives it a bit of a primer if you like it gives the, the sprue goo something to attack. So I'm going to take my sprue goo, get rid of the stringiness, and just lay this in the joints. Now I'm I'm. As you see, I'm putting loads on because I know it's going to sink in. You know, if you just put a tiny little drop on there, then within 10 minutes it would have disappeared down into the crevice. Why am I using sprue goo? Because it bonds it, it fills it, and it's the same material as the rest of the model is made of. And then when I come to put my hull streaks on afterwards. Let's get a bit more masking tape on there. I think protect those um, protect those scuttles. Yeah when I come to um glue my hull plating on I'll be gluing to polystyrene because I want to use liquid cement to glue them on. I don't want to be using super glue. So if I did this with filler I would have areas where there's no plastic. And then I would get areas where it all lifts. Nice of pushing that into those holes. Just like that. Stuff stinks. 
Okay, so we'll brush some in there. there we go so that's that all done let's get some more down. I can see that it's sinking away what it is the capillary action will pull the glue pull the sprue glue into the gap into the gaps and then you just got to be ready to come along afterwards and and backfill so you can see down here it's all pulled in now just got to put some more over the top of that And yep, it'll take a while to dry, and yep, it'll sink back and everything. But really, this is all going to be covered in plating. We're not really worried about it. And there we are. That's how, not how to, it's how I have gone about blending all the the, 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 the bowing. And you can see now, when we look at this on an angle, let's try and get it on a nice angle for you. We've now got the, the whole contour following the shape rather than having this great big hip and bulge in it so there we go now what I might do next is move on to the stern because I believe we've got the same issue here this area here on the stern so I think we could have a case that all this needs to be sanded back or machined back or whatever um, sorry I'm off camera there aren't I all this area here along the midships because as you can see one of the reasons I picked up on this was the fact that the bilge keels don't look right and if we look now where that point is there where are we where that point is there that is the end of the bilge keel and when you look at a plan view the bilge keel cuts in okay so there's one there one there all right now, if you look at that from the top, it looks correct because it's, it's pointing in towards the centre and then out and then back in towards the centre of the back. It forms like a like a two brackets facing each other. So that's how that is. But if we look at it from the side, because of the shape of the hull, it forms an arc that way and it should be forming an arc that way. Where if you look now, I mean, I know it would be coming too far forward, but if you project that point forward, it would be here. Okay, if you project that, that one forward in plan view, it would be here, which is lower down, so it will give you that curve up. So that's how I know, that's, that was what gave me the, the first indications to start looking at this hull and see what's going on. Just going to, you can do is wet your finger and just rub over that sprue goo. Make sure you've got no lumps and bumps on it, makes it easier to sand. There we go. So uh, there we go guys, that has been part two. So now I need to think about what I'm going to do next. But the main thing is to leave this um, at least a good, you know, three or four hours, let it dry off, let it start to bite before you start um, pulling anything about. Because, you know, you don't want to be sort of putting any stress around this area, pulling it about and then letting it set in that stressed position. So um, the main thing is take your time, do your cuts, think about what you're cutting and um, don't stress anything. Don't start bending stuff about and pulling it about it's uh, once you start doing that is when you start losing your shape so there we go guys oh another thing i'm not sure about is this i'm looking at this now here how they've got this bow sort of cutting in here i'm not sure if that's correct i'm not sure if that should just flow out to a point here and that there is all incorrect if that's the case i don't know i don't have to cut that out cut that piece out heat it you know get it warm flatten it and then glue it back in I, I don't know of any other way of doing it but um we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it i'm not sure if it's correct or not but when you look at it like this you can see it's sort of it's almost got like an atlantic nose and i'm not sure if that's right or not right i'll see you uh atlantic bow should i say um i'll see you all soon with part three that has been part two hope you enjoyed it see you all soon bye